Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my privilege to introduce our chief guest, Honorable Shri Achyut Godbole Ji. He stood 16th in the SSC exams and first in the university. He scored 100% marks in almost all exams in mathematics, right from first standard to IIT. He is a chemical engineer from IIT Mumbai 1972. He has 32 years of experience in developing software and managing software companies. He has traveled all over the globe more than 150 times for IT business. He has contributed to the multifold growth of companies such as Putney, Intel, LNT Infotech, Apar and Disha, etc., while working at the highest levels such as CEO, MD, or ED. He has written four technical books on various topics like operating systems, data communications and networks, web technologies, and demystifying computers, published by Tata McGraw Hill. Many are translated in Chinese and used as reference books in many countries. He has written popular best-selling 33 books in Marathi. For example, Musafir, Zapura in volumes 1, 2, and 3, Sanganaka Yuga, Samvad, just to name a few. He has written popular columns like Tantra Mantra, that is technology, Udyate Jag, Tomorrow's World, Vaidya Kayan, History of Medicine, Prani Jagat, Animal World, Vidyanavad, Science Controversies, and Infotech, like demystifying modern concepts in information technology, so on and so forth. He was awarded for his books by the state government. He has taken keen interest in science, technology, mathematics, management, music, literature, arts, economics, philosophy, and psychology, apart from information technology. He has given speeches on science, technology, management, music, literature, economics, and mathematics in English and Marathi on the TV, radio, and many conferences worldwide. He has been awarded with many prestigious awards. He has participated in delivering the TEDx lecture on information technology in Goa. He was the president of Yuva Natya Sahitya Sammelan held in 2011. He was the chief guest at the function of Ruhan Maharashtra Mandar USA held in Los Angeles in 2015. Again, a similar function in London in 2017 and again as a chief guest at a function in Sydney, Australia. He has contributed to building Ashiana, a school in Mumbai for mentally challenged children with about 40 autistic children. He is currently a managing director of Soft Excel Consultancy. It is indeed our honor and privilege to have you, sir, today. I now kindly request you to address the gathering. Over to you, Honorable Sri Achyut Godbolech. May I request you to kindly unmute yourself, sir? Thanks a lot. Uh, do you, can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, thanks a lot for this kind introduction. And uh, 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 I, I must say that I'm really very delighted to be uh, to, to uh, be invited to this program because uh, this program is a much needed program for uh, the academia. I mean, I've been... Uh, uh, actually in the industry, software in the industry for a number of years, in fact, decades. And I've witnessed how students coming from uh, institutes, even such as IITs, actually lacked the practical knowledge of working in an industry. I must tell you that in software industry at that time, and I'm sure even today, the students coming out of the colleges had to be trained by these companies for six months, for six months, please understand the kind of investment, the kind of money that the, uh, the industry has to spend to train them. Uh, because the academic was, te was teaching them, you know, theoretical concepts and industry wanted them to be sort of, you know, attuned to what industry needs. And they, they are quite different. Uh, as far as the and, and therefore, I think it is very welcome step uh, that uh, MIT has taken. I really congratulate MIT and Dr. Limay, and in fact, all the faculty, the dean and uh, VC, I mean, whosoever has participated in the decision making. I think it's a great uh, concept. Uh, it'll help the students to enter into the, the industrial era or even research and so on and so forth. 
pharma industry I mean, I'll, you know i'll probably speak a little bit about pharma industry and then talk about in general what what is in store for us as far as the you know technology is concerned and, and what we should do about it and in the end i would talk about the aspects that have been already touched upon by a few who actually spoke before me in terms of the social skills and so on and so forth which are very 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 important at least in software industry and i'm glad that even you know it was spoken about by the uh, in, uh, by my uh, by the speakers who spoke before me the pharma industry is really you know by in, in 2020 pharma industry is supposed to be us dollars 55 billion dollars in india and it growing at 16% it's a favorite destination for multinationals in india because of low man manpower cost and highly qualified graduates so you know these are some bright spots as far as the ph pharmacy industry is concerned <clears throat> india is called as pharmacy of the world as we know of course we are in a deep crisis as of as, as, as of today but because of the reasons that we don't want to talk about right now but there are many drugs which are coming you know which are being discovered which are being worked on which are being researched and therefore there is a good demand for the, the pharmacy students <clears throat> uh, india is among top 3 markets for <clears throat> pharma companies by the way the there were issues like there was no uniform curriculum as i understand i'm not an expert in pharma pharmacology uh, sort of you know curriculum and so on but i was told that there was no uniformity uniformity in in the curriculum across <clears throat> universities and so on so one person graduating from one university going to the other you know didn't sort of i mean they had to match what was taught in the first university and what what is required and so on so i think there was no uniform curriculum i understand until recently which probably has been <coughs> corrected but the most important thing that was noticed and is still being noticed is the gap between industry and the education the academic year i think that was pointed out by i understand i've read some reports by gauri palsokar and madhukar tajne and there was a significant gap that was found i understand and shivaji gaude and nitin sona ji also recommended changes in the curriculum We, even pharmacy council of india which is called the pci recommended <clears throat> industry oriented courses as I, as i understand i think it is very important then there was a 2019 report which was actually you know referred to by dr lima in his address <clears throat> so i won't talk much about it but there are more and more pharmacy schools which are being opened in india <clears throat> but until recently the the job openings were not that many and i understand that quite a few people actually took jobs in the it industry and jobs in the pharmacy industry were not as many i mean that's what i actually learned from this report the important thing that i want to stress here is that in that report it is mentioned that the, the, there's a huge amount of stress that the pharmacy students undergo and i think i would like to uh, bring your attention to this point and i would request the uh, uh, the staff who's designing this course to add one element of stress management i don't know whether that is already included in this or not because it, it is reported that 68% of the of the students who uh, who actually uh, answered those questions reported that they had a lot of stress and that's maybe because of the education system because of the examination system because of financial stress i don't know what that was but uh, or maybe the you know the the obviously the job prospects and so on and so forth and in the industry itself when questions were asked 15% of the people who actually were working in the pharma industry 15% wanted to change their job and they were sick of working in pharma industry so there, there are a lot of issues about i think preparing the students about what to expect when they go to industries and how to handle stress and that's a psychological element that i would certainly recommend and request uh, for, you know people to uh, to add to your curriculum if that is already not added <clears throat> the kinds of jobs that you know uh, drug discovery or in pharm you know, in pharmacy that i understand with my limited knowledge is aggregate and uh, synthesize information understand mechanisms of disease establish biomarkers generate data and models repurpose existing drugs generate novel drug candidates validate and optimize drug candidates design drugs design pre clinical experiments run pre pre clinical experiments design clinical trials recruit for clinic clinical trials optimize clinical trials publish data analyze real world experience but i think 
the the important thing is that in all of these machine learning and deep learning and artificial intelligence is going to play a very very important role i don't know whether you have included that in your curriculum or not but the the, the most important thing that we need to talk about is that the technology is changing enormously very 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 rapidly just to give you some sort of you know broad idea the i mean the the, the universe came to existence you know 14 billion years ago the earth uh, 4.5 billion years ago and then the uh, first living being came into existence uh, 3.75 billion years ago and then there was evolution and human being came into existence maybe 100000 years ago and alvin toffler divides this into agriculture the uh, industry and services and ag- agriculture spanned for tens of thousands of years and there was hardly any progress because there was no technology and then in uh, the uh, industrial revolution followed and the progress that we made in only in a few centuries was much much higher than the progress that we made in tens of thousands of years of agriculture and then followed services at least modern services uh, starting from 1960s onwards when information technology started you know influencing all the walks of life and the 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 progress the technological progress that we made in in the last few decades was much higher than the progress that we made in the few centuries of industry which in turn was much higher than the progress that we made in tens of thousands of years so in mathematical terms we're talking about d2y by dx2 here with the rate of rate of change is enormous i'm just to give you some idea the progress that we made in the last 10 years is is more than the progress that we made in the entire history of mankind and that's not because we have suddenly become wiser or you know more more intelligent it's it's only because we are standing on the shoulders of our predecessors as newton used to say because newton was standing on the shoulders of copernicus and kepler and galileo as we know we are standing on the shoulders of you know all the hundreds and thousands of people who are doing a research you know all over the world and therefore you know the the hundreds of research papers are being published there are hundreds of laboratories which are conducting research and so on so a new person who's doing this doing research or you know, it has a lot of information and you know, therefore we're standing on the shoulders of our predecessors and therefore the rate of change is very very high and i think that is very important and if you look at the services decade 1960s was the era of mainframe 70s was mini computers 80s was personal computers or desktop computers 90s was internet 2000 decade was mobile and 2011 in fact was the beginning of industry 4.0 which was referred to in the, by by dr pande i think industry 4.0 encompasses artificial intelligence and actually has you know it consists of or comprises artificial intelligence augmented reality virtual reality big data uh, 3d printing and the rest i mean it's it's a whole lot of combination of variety of things which actually constitute industry 4.0 and that actually started in germany and they had actually plan of, of, of executing this in the next 2 3 decades maybe by to 2040 or whatever but i think the, the the rate at which things are changing today is enormous i mean the reason why i'm mentioning this to all the students today is is is, is that one sociologist has said that you will have to change jobs six times in your career no i don't know whether it's six or four or three or whatever but it is very important by changing job does not mean changing from city bank to bank of america changing bank job does not mean changing back from sbi to you know or infosys to to tcs changing job means changing the way you are doing job doing your work so un- unlearning and learning is going to be the mantra of tomorrow's existence please understand all the students it is extremely important to unlearn and learn and and therefore you know what uh, uh, professor from spain said was very important all the students who actually go out one must continuously come back and actually teach the, the academicians i mean this is very important because in fact when i i passed out from iit after 5 years we, we said the world has changed by back then by the way world has changed so much that we need to go back to the first year now you know so i think now the rate of change is so so fast so, so that you don't i mean you cannot just sort of take education and so sort of retire based on that education the way we used to have maybe 30 40 years ago you cannot you know you'll have to continuously change just to give you an idea about software 
I myself have you know sort of gone through in my career. You know, programming languages such as Basic, Basic Plus, Basic Plus Two, Cobol, various versions, Fortran Four, Fortran Seventy Seven, Fortran, various versions. Then there is C, and there is Java, and there is Ada, and there is you know, etc. Now Python, R, and so on. But each had a purpose. Basic for education, Cobol for commercial applications, Fortran for scientific, C for portability, Java for internet, and Ada for military, and so on. So each had its application, by the way. tomorrow applications will change and so will the languages and operating systems and and so on and so forth this is about software and the same thing is going to change in all walks of life because of artificial intelligence and machine learning and deep learning but that's going to really change the entire landscape and the way we do things even in the last couple of in fact 30 40 years if you see the the, the way the jobs have changed when when word uh, word processor and dtp came they desktop publishing the jobs of all the typists vanished for instance they had to learn new techniques take atms for instance when atms came what did what, what is the function of the bank teller clerk i mean earlier we used to go and deposit our money and then the teller clerk is to you know give give us money or maybe take money from us when we deposit our money but after atms all that vanished unless they learn new new uh, skills they were jobless so i think this is it, it, when with cad cam with cad cam all the draftsmen job you know they had to learn cad cam even dtp for that matter today no no newspaper can exist without dtp you know no if there is a assassination of an american president at 10 o'clock in the 9 o'clock in the night earlier days you couldn't do a thing you had to print that publish that news next day because all your setting of the paper had had been done and you couldn't do a thing today with dtp you can get that news get photographs and what would have been printed on the first page you push that on the fourth page and actually push the recent news on the first page and redesign your your page maybe in a few minutes and and, and actually publish your newspaper in the next 7 o'clock the morning 7 o'clock the newspaper has news which is almost the latest the, so the so the newspapers who say i don't want to sort of you know use dtp will be thrown out of business in fact tomorrow's world is going to be an ex- extremely dif- different world and that's going to happen very rapidly i mean there are there will be no notes no checks no debit cards no credit cards no money in a sense that we understand in china there's no money for for instance all money <clears throat> is in mobile in zero and one in the form of zeros and ones and if you work somewhere it is deposited and your bank balance increases when you spend and that with paytm and bhim we already understand how that happens it will take 5 years maybe in india or 10 years but money in the in the sense that we understand will not happen banks insurance and all all these institutes hundreds and thousands of offices will become museums please understand i want to say this very clearly to students the way i i can clearly visualize why should you need a, a, a building like a bank because you can sit at home you can go to the atm and withdraw and deposit money you can apply for your loan through internet <clears throat> Uh, you you scan your documents they can be verified loan can be you know approved and money can be transferred why do you need hundreds of clerks and managers and you know hundreds of other things almost everything that insurance does bank does stock market does all that or many offices do can be done sitting at home now people still go out for exercise for you know for tours and enjoyment and swimming etc but you don't need to go to the offices i think that is going to change the entire way of working i think it's, and, and it's not sort of next 50 or 100 years i can clearly see that happen you know very quickly whether that is i'm not saying that is good and i'm not even <clears throat> passing value judgment but i can see that happen very very clearly and therefore i think it is very important that there is a rate of obsolescence of jobs with with cad cam with atms with uh, you know animation software hundreds of artists who used to be employed by walt disney and thereafter lost their jobs for instance so the 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 way we do things is going to change bill gates wrote a book in 1996 called business at the speed of light with internet all the intermediates intermediaries are vanishing you don't need a travel agent today for at least booking the tickets unless the travel agent re sort of invents himself or herself and and offers you 
let's say uh, uh, i can make a group booking i can make group hotel booking i can uh, organize a tour i'll be a guide and put to put together a sort of a product then a travel agent can exist but no travel agent can exist today as an intermediary who just cuts tickets because you can do that on internet in fact bill gates goes to extent of saying that all intermediaries will be go why should a bookshop exist then you can buy books from the from line today with amazon you can buy books from amazon why should you need to store books so all the jobs are going to change the no there will be no libraries because all libraries will be digital and they'll be they'll be accessed so uh, all i'm saying is you know this is almost surely going to happen within 5 years 10 years 20 years and 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 so on and so forth i'm i'm talking about this because i'm not talking only to pharmacy students as as i was told to by dr limay but it is very important for us to understand how world is going to change and how jobs are going to vanish and new jobs are going to uh, uh, arrive with artificial intelligence the experts in the west have said that 67% of the jobs will vanish now i don't i don't believe that 67% will vanish but some will vanish and those which which will which will remain their nature will change and they, they, that that's what is that's what i'm trying to emphasize again and again that the way you do things is going to change very rapidly because of the rate of obsolescence and the rate of technological progress so you need to be con- continuously aware of unlearning and learning all the time you can't say, say i i learned this in my college days school days and now i can pass on my entire career based on that knowledge you will fail i mean i can assure you completely coming back to coming to <clears throat> the artificial intelligence and machine learning i mean i don't want to sort of take too much time about this but today in drug discovery and so on machine learning is being used <clears throat> very effectively because machine learning ultimately is pattern recognition please understand this and deep learning is essentially multi layer i mean i don't want to sort of go into neural networks and if there are multiple layers then it's called as deep learning but i'll give you an example for you to understand what is deep learning let's take automatic translation now earlier attempts of automatic translations were made okay um, uh, i believe in canada if i'm not mistaken because canada was ruled by french and the uh, 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 british so the french and english both languages are used so any government document has to be translated into french and english both at the same time so there are hundreds of people doing this translation at at, at any time because there are several you know sec- uh, uh, government documents and uh, uh, you know various rules that are coming out every day so <clears throat> so basically then they were they thought can we do this automatically and uh, that's when this, the the thought started happening and initially the, the 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 attempt was to use the grammar for instance if i have to translate from english to french from french to english then i have to teach that program or the algorithm or the program english language syntax and french language syntax which means a uh, noun and verb and adjectives and and corresponding you know the, the way sentences are organized and syntax and so on and then build dictionaries of two uh, languages and then and then translate that experiment failed please understand that experiment did not work <clears throat> then they thought that let me the, 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 how does a child learn you don't need to tell the child this is a particular language and the parents are talking about when you don't need to teach the child this is a noun this is an adjective this is the verb and so on the child picks up right child learns by experience and that is the beauty of deep learning so what they really did is build an algorithm which finds similarity so they fed one english sentence one french sentence and the algorithm actually picked up and learned from that sentence what was what were the similarities obviously for the with the first sentence they did not learn too much but when the second came third came and lakhs of sentences came then the algorithm actually learned the similar things found out what is substituted for what in what language found out the, the way the sentences are constructed affected the syntax and build dictionaries and so on on its own the algorithm was built to learn please understand algorithm was not built to teach syntax and that is deep learning i obviously is multi layered neural networks etc but when that was done 
then today i am this i have to verify but to, uh, today when you feed one uh, a sentence in one language 92 or 95% of the uh, translation is done automatically now this is what the deep learning can do for you even google translate how does it do i mean obviously it uses artificial intelligence where when you it allows you to translate into multiple languages how does it do because it has been taught to to do this like the child learns to uh, uh, learns a language so i think uh, the the ai and machine learning and deep learning is, uh, is becoming very very important dominating and it's it's also dominating in in drug discovery as i understand all pharma companies are using machine deep learning techniques for drug discovery i mean i have very example pfizer for instance uses ivm watson Roche's subsidiary Gen Genentech uses GNS based on Cambridge, Massachusetts. J and J uses some product and so on. So most of the companies are have started using. And as I was as as I was uh, as said by Dr. Pandey, the drug the, the, it, it used to take five years for for it to start tri trials. Now it takes months, I guess. i must say that there is a little controversy as to the as to the success rate and and so on and so forth and and so on. but there is a project called melody machine learning ledger orchestration in which 10 companies have participated because you must understand the artificial intelligence is driven by big data there is a huge amount of data today by in, in social media in iot that is internet of things all the equipment could talking to each other over internet and iot that is industrial internet of things that is all the factory machines and so on also which which have smart enough to talk to each other and they can send signals that i am now running out i am wearing out i need maintenance and so on so forth and etc etc so i iot iiot social media credit cards purchases hundreds of things that are big big information so can we draw inferences from this big data this is where machine learning and inside data mining and so on so forth comes in so can we draw inferences from this big data now this is a very interesting uh, 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 this thing so each company had a large amount of data of its own so what the, these 10 companies thought is that let's have this project where we can share this data and they have agreed to do that which is very very important now there is a london based startup which is called a benevolent bio and it, it it uses ai platform on the cloud by the way and it it has a huge database of research papers patents client trials patient records and it can be queried with natural language by natural language i, I, I natural language i mean you know normally with sql and all our computer databases you had to have use a specific structured language like structured query language is sql language but by natural language the way we asked to google uh, uh, can you tell me a hotel near oxford street you know i, I can ask this question to google and uh, google can answer that no it's a question in natural language it's not a question in a structured query language that the computer understand so to th this database you can actually query in natural language and millions of relationships it, it, you see that's where the whole data mining and big data and artificial intelligence comes in this actually finds out relationships between genes symptoms diseases proteins tissues and candidate drugs now this is important this was this is interesting this was asked about treatment of motor neuron disease <coughs> which stephen hawking had if we, if, as we know <coughs> it flagged off 100 possible existing compounds as possible drugs scientists then examined that and then zeroed in and and chose five of these and now they are researching on four of them and one actually has found out to to delay the onset of that disease now i think the the, the important thing is that this is just one example there must be many and i'm sure there are controversies about it but the the point i'm trying to make is that as as we go along machine learning and deep learning is going to play a enormous amount of role in pharma and in fact most of the other industries as well with 3d printing the entire printing and manufacturing industries are going to change what will workers do supervisors do engineers do i mean their roles are going to change so please understand i mean i'm really have no words to express but it is very important that you 
that we will have to be ready to i don't know frighten the students here but it's important what what would i do if i were a student today a i would be very i would pay a lot of attention to the basics of technology i used to say in my computer science you must know digital electronics computer architecture operating systems database of basics they will change our uh, today's oracle and today uh, some other database tomorrow new database will come today it is uh, a particular operating system tomorrow new operating system will come each operating system has a purpose embedded operating system was was required because of embedded software for you know washing machines and hundreds of other embedded software which is between hardware and software which is why it is called as firmware so uh, embedded so a real time operating system embedded operating system uh, you know there are various operating systems that are required by different purposes but tomorrow's applications will be different like abdul kalam used to say tomorrow this century is going to be guided by three t's information technology biotechnology and nanotechnology three t's and tomorrow we may be going to moon or bioinformatics or you know various types of uh, of uh, nanotechnology i mean the the way operating so there will be new operating systems new databases new languages in, in software and new techniques in, in, uh, emerging and that will be true in not only pharma that will be true about everything else manufacturing will change it completely retail will change as i have said you know what will happen to shops i don't know what will happen in 20 30 years why should a shop of show which displays hundreds of shirts be required because you can buy it directly with from you know various producers or suppliers pan hussein and whatever so i think it will it will slowly happen it will happen first in the west and then here i guess in next 20 30 years but the students have 30 40 years of span of their career so i think most of these things will happen during their career and they will have to unlearn and learn very fast so who will succeed in tomorrow's world in my opinion one who are who have ba- their basics very clear is whether the engineering with accounting with the banking with the pharma whatever branch you are in the basics are clear so that you can unlearn and learn very quickly a one but i would then say and i'm very glad extremely glad that uh, and also the professor from spain i'm really very very thankful to him that he mentioned 30% of the time is on social skills i have found in my th- th- you know several decades of industry experience that people that, that people fail in their career not so much because of technology of course there are people who fail because of technology but much more because of lack of social skills teamwork being pleasant being a good listener being a good communicator is a is a is very very important for a good leader can you enthuse others can you generate enthusiasm can you encourage others can you work with others or you are egoistic egotistic are you dominating this is extremely important as far as uh, leadership is concerned if you want to just somehow get a job and you know be at a periphery and be thrown out of your job sometime and then again find a job somewhere else and then again wait until you're thrown out and you know so on and so forth that's another matter but if you really want to be at the center stage and if you want to lead things and if you want to be a leader you i mean i i would recommend that the students should pay attention to what i'm saying i mean you need to not just speak be technically sound and ready to unlearn and learn but also be an excellent communicator excellent the team worker a good listener and i think that is a very very important thing and i i i am glad that uh, your curriculum or your your current two week program actually emphasizes this and i i would really i was very happy to see that it, it has a section on um, social skills I, i i think you know that's that's really all i don't want to frighten but i i want to sort of uh, make sure that we are you know i want to portray a picture of what's likely to happen in all box of life because i've i've seen information technology change so rapidly in front of my eyes uh, and uh, i i would much rather request or recommend that we keep up with times be alert and all the time uh, agile and uh, 
you know, and, and last but not the least, as Professor Limay said, and also as is the motto of the MIT World Peace University, all that we work ultimately is for the common person. Whether you go to America, go, whether you go to Europe, make money, you know, build bungalows and have cars, etc. Ultimately, whatever you work, is it reaching to the lowermost strata of your society? Is it helping the poorest of the poor in the world? That is very important in my opinion, ask that question all the time. And you know, always remember that in at least in India, <clears throat> there are millions of people who are deprived of the privilege that you have. So we owe a lot to them and whatever we do, we should be concerned about the progress of all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, sir, for those thoughtful remarks that have actually incentivized us.